Welcome to the uh, Friday Distal Seminar Series. Uh, I'm Brian Winkowski. I'm a physical oceanographer at Dolphin Island Sea Lab. So those are the, anybody that's in here that, that uh, may not be familiar with the seminar series or myself. Uh, thank you for your attending. Uh, the, today's speaker is a, a postdoc in my lab and John Lader's lab. And um, Jalang um, Liu, who uh, came to us in September from the University of Maine. Um, he working in the, he got his he's he was working out of the uh, engineering Dad, department there and so no sorry guys I have a, a child that I'm, I'm caring for today apologize for that um, but um, he came to us from the University of Maine in the engineering department um, and, and the engineering program and so he has experience doing numerical modeling as well as observational work um, and it just so happens a lot of his dissertation research it, it was focused on a farm not far from the Darling Marine Center. Um, some of you, if anybody knows uh, the University of Maine and their um, marine research lab, that's the Darling Marine Center. Um, so we did his work uh, on the Damerscotta River um, at a, a shellfish uh, ha, um, farm there. And so today um, he's going to be talking about that work. Right now at the Sea Lab, for anybody that doesn't know, he's working on a project with John Lader and I, um, basically updating or developing a new numerical model of Mobile Bay, basically upgrading, I don't know, for those of you who know Kiang Park, um, we're basically developing a, a new and improve, hopefully improved model of Mobile Bay that we're gonna be using on, on a range of projects. Um, uh, so, um, if you have questions about that, you're more than welcome to ask him about his new work going forward. Um, but this is uh, a presentation on stuff that he's already done and, and some of it's out in the literature already. Um, and so uh, I think it should be a really nice talk. Uh, okay, with that, I will turn it over to Jalang um, and uh, I will go on uh, mute here. So, uh, all right, Jalang, take it away. Okay, thank you, Brian. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm Jalom from University of Maine, so I'm very excited to join Joins group, uh, uh, Brian Joins group. So, and uh, I'm very glad to share my uh, previous work. So, I just uh, since I just joined the C Lab, I am some new new results about Mobile Bay is coming out. So, I maybe perhaps we see it for next semester or next year for the seminar. I will report the the Mobile stuff, Mobile Bay stuff. Yeah, so today's talk is more like the hydrodynamic impacts of a floating oyster farm in a, in a low uh, inflow estuary as in Maine. So uh, as we all know, the aquaculture is uh, very important uh, uh, for our food security. And it has, uh, I know, uh, it has, okay, here. And it has reported that the, the uh, aquaculture contributed, uh, increased the annual, annual food Fish uh, play food consumption increased from 19 uh, grams in year 10, 10, year of, uh, 1960s to uh, to more than 20 kilograms in year 2015. And it means now uh, people are uh, consume double seafood as 50 years before. And uh, that's the development due to the development of agriculture. And uh, it is uh, also uh, uh, predicted that by year of 2030, about almost 10 years later, so 62% of the seafood will from aquaculture. That means there's really demand for aquaculture to expansion, uh, extension in the near future. And uh, so uh, also, but the the uh, to meet this demand, the aquaculture activities should increase nine almost ten percent per year. Yeah, to meet the requirements. However, now the increment is only four percent. So it means it's only the the aquaculture uh, growth only meets forty percent of the uh, of the uh, demand. And uh, among all this. Uh, aquaculture, so they have uh, fish, fishing and the uh, fishing uh, aquaculture. So, but here they, they mainly focus on the uh, shellfish aquaculture. It is still increasing uh, over the uh, past decades, as shown by the graph. So, the uh, in the year of 2018, 
the uh, total, the global total production of shellfish is Hello? Yep. John, are you sharing your screen? I can't, I can't, I'm just looking, I don't know if anybody else has seeing what they're seeing, but I can't see your presentation. So I'm not sure, are you sharing your screen? Yes. I can, can see it. Can see Everyone it. can see it? So I'm the only one that can't see it? I can see it. Okay, okay. then I, I guess I'll we'll just go on. I don't know why I can't see it. I'm just looking at a university program sort of black screen. So I wasn't sure, as long as everyone else can see it, that's what's most important. Yeah, so can anyone cannot see the screen? Yeah, and don't worry. Yeah, don't worry about. Don't worry about it. Uh, carry on, since everyone else can see it, we're good. Okay, and uh, so year of 2019, the shellfish production reached to uh, 17 point uh, point 17 point five million tons. The and among all this uh, shellfish production, the oyster aquaculture is a dominant resource. It reaches, it uh, accounts more than. Uh, one third of the total production. So in the year of 2018, so the main species uh, culture in, uh, in the shellfish culture is the capped oyster and also the Pacific capped, capped oyster. So totally they covered more than 34%. And uh, it's a dumb resource for our uh, uh, seafood. And uh, the demand, of course, the, the, the the increment from year of 20, 20, uh, 2010 to year of 2018 is 27%, totally 27%. But uh, the annual increment is only 4%. That means, so in the future, the, the oyster culture should be extended to meet the, to meet, to fill the, the demand the supply gap. And so the, in the future, maybe more farms, we will see more farms and more larger size farms in the near area, near in asteroids or in the Bay Area. And uh, so, uh, well, in, in order to make this agriculture sustainable in the future, we need lots of research efforts, a lot of research efforts on it. But what, need, what do we need to do is to understand interaction between agriculture and the surrounding environment. And we also need to have a to better estimate the carrying capacity of the system. Should we, should we uh, put too much oysters or too less oysters, too many oysters or too less oysters? And also we need to uh, have all this research. It's based on agriculture, right? We, and uh, finally, we need to guide the stakeholders we should, and, uh, and the uh, policy makers to we, we need to progress, provide the suggestion for them to have a better uh, uh, development of oyster of aquaculture in the future. So that's the three uh, topics we need to pay, pay attention in the future. And, uh, and also, but for aquaculture, it has so many aspects. It covers fixed, right? like the, uh, how the ties current flow around the farm, and biochemistry, and uh, also the, uh, like the dual oxygen, hypoxia, and the, uh, in, uh, organic and, in, and inorganic particles, all that stuff. Ecological economy and engineering. So how do we design, deploy, or to place, where do we place the farm? But all these aspects are based on the hydrodynamics of the system. So the, the dynamics plays a crucial role in determining all the factors, like the, for the oyster growth, like the salinity, temperature, turbidity, oxygen, food, and also the load, the, the, the loading action on your structure. All this are from the current, from the flow. So we need to understand the flow at the beginning. And, uh, and all this uh, variable are transported by the uh, uh, current so, and also impact, impact by the mixing and the transport in the system. So in order to uh, have a better understanding of the hydrodynamic impacts of the farm and the interaction with the farm. So we uh, did our work uh, in, uh, uh, around a uh, also farm in, in Maine. So we would like to know how does the farm influence dynamics of the system, how it change the circulation, the momentum, and the equipment mixing. And how will the, uh, how does the farm change the subtitle flow patterns? Not only tidal flow patterns, or subtitle flow, because the subtitle flow is more important for food delivery. And how 
do the farm, do various farm designs and layouts to change the material transport. So in order to answer these three questions, we uh, proposed uh, some work. So first one, we did an uh, observation around the farm. And then based on the observation, we proposed a, a semi-analytical model to study the farm impacts on, on uh, tides and subtides. And uh, all based on our work, we prefer to provide uh, some uh, guidelines. So due to the time limitation today, I will only focus on the first two topics. Um, it's hard, I mean, we have no time to talk, to talk about the third one. And uh, so, uh, then, okay, today's talk is generally divided, divided uh, consists of two sections. So the third part is the uh, uh, dynamic, dynamic response to the farm. We did the uh, uh, observation and, analysis, and the data analysis focusing on the momentum, circulation, temperature mixing. We also estimate the drag coefficient from our observation. The uh, second part is uh, uh, we will introduce the analytical, the same analytical model developed for to evaluate or to uh, reveal the mechanism of, of farm impact on subtidal flows. And uh, so uh, first, let's look at the, let's move to the field. We choose uh, the uh, Dam Scott River. It is the largest oyster producer in Maine. And uh, so the uh, so this study the Dandani Morris is just next to this estuary. And uh, so the but the most of the uh, oyster farms are in the upstream of this uh, estuary. So it is uh, very short, 26 kilometers long, and the width. Uh, converges from 1,000 kilometers to 100, 500 meters uh, from mouth to the head. And the, but the depth changes from 40 meters to three meters to the head. This is a typical estuary in Maine. So they have, in Maine, they have lots of, there are lots of uh, short and uh, strong converged estuaries. The tide is, tidal range is, uh, is large. It uh, varies from 2.3. 2.7 to 3.3 meters uh, from deep tide to spring tide. That's a very high tide, uh, strong tidal forcing. And the maximum current tidal current can reach up to 0.55 meter per second. The uh, river, the for Dam Scott River, the river discharge is uh, is low because there's a dam uh, built at the uh, head. And uh, in the dry season, the, the the uh, fresh water uh, discharge is on less than one cubic cubic meter per second, but in the but in the early in the spring or early summer, because so many snow melted, there will be a, a pose of the uh, uh, river discharge. It's reached up to more than fourteen uh, kilometer cubic meters per second. So our survey conducted in June which means after. We or in our uh, field survey, we already after the snow melting season, so the river discharge is also low. The uh, we choose the largest farm in the Damascus River, so it's located on the western uh, uh, edge of the uh, western uh, shore of the of the river, and uh, so the farm is uh, about more than two hundred two hundred seventy meters wide along the seaward. Boundary. Uh, this is the ocean of uh, the seaward boundary, and decreased to 50 meters or uh, at the uh, landward boundary. And the farms are consist of a series of long lines. So in each long line, there are lots of oyster cages. It's floating, as shown in the figure. So it flows uh, that's uh, near the surface. All, all the farms, all the oysters are put in the cages, and the cages are put in the uh, baskets. So all these white bars shows the uh, the farm. Uh, area. And uh, locally, when we go to the farm, we find the, the local basimetry is really, really complicated because first there is a bend. Uh, you will see in the bathymetry, so the plot shows the bathymetry, there is a bend in the channel. And, uh, there, and also the, the channel is bifurcated, it means the, there is a second channel right below the farm. And uh, also the ch channel. Uh, Gets converged uh, at the up at the northern along the northern boundary. So it's a very narrow channel in the south, in the north, 
and a very wide channel channel on the thumbs and it has a bend and also a bifurcated channel. It makes us very annoyed to identify the farm impact with the symmetry impact. So, uh, so here is our field strategy. We uh, we did a, a transect survey along the two boundaries, the apps, the uh, landward boundary of the farm and the farm's seaward boundary. We use ADCP, we call ADCP to uh, measure the cross-sectional currents, tidal currents. And uh, we have two boats, two, two group people do the survey and they have two boundaries at the same time. And, uh, and we also uh, had a choose, chosen three uh, hydrographic stations along the survey shown by the markers, by the circle, square, and the uh, triangle. So we are going to we use a micro CTD to collect temperature, salinity, conduct, uh, conductivity, and also the vertical shear turbidity. So it, it will give us a profile of all the, these variables. And uh, we also deployed an ADUV uh, shown by this black diamond. So the ADUV is for point measurement. The sampling frequency is 64 hertz. So it can capture the uh, microstructural turbulence in that point. And also in uh, the Dali Marine Center deployed a land ocean biochemical uh, buoy uh, shown by this yellow star, so also near the farm. So this is all the data we have. We all we, we did a survey in springtide and niptide in order to make our observation more consistent. And the micro CTD, so that area is very shallow, so it's only uh, six, uh, six to seven meters. And we deploy the micro CTD upward. So we release the CTD at the bottom and let it flow up. Then we can measure the a large range of uh, uh, variables near the surface. And the uh, ADV was mounted inside the farm because we cannot go through the farm. The farmers didn't want, didn't want us to disturb their oysters. So we cannot go through their farm, but we are able to deploy an instrument just inside their farm. It's the ADV. So, that's all our work. So it's uh, we we do the uh, transect survey hourly, uh, covering of thirteen uh, hour survey. So we had thirteen transects at each boundaries. Uh, it's very, it's all it was heavy loaded. And uh, so here comes our flow patterns. First, let's check the 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 focus on the uh, flood tide. The uh, here we plus the. Uh, current distribution across the section at the two boundaries. So the, the left panel shows the seaward transect, just, just at the seaward boundary of the farm. And the right plot shows the uh, 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 distribution at the landward uh, transect. So we can clearly see during flood, the flow is coming from south to the north. So it hits the southern boundary and then go to the northern boundary. And then means here, just in the farm area, we can see after the farm, the velocity is reduced to less than 0.1 meter per second, especially on the western side. So that means the velocity was really low below the after the farm. That's the along channel velocity. We also check the cross channel velocity at two transects. So uh, along the uh, seaward boundary, so we can see a uh, circulation. Uh, clockwise circulation developed in the no farm area. So when now we are looking into the estuary, so we have a clockwise circulation. The surface flow goes to the east, and bottom flow goes to the to the left, to the uh, west uh, circulation. And but in the farm area, it seems that it's odd. So we didn't have that pattern. That's a very uh, regular pattern. And uh, after the farm. We can see the circulation also developed by right, in the other part uh, of the estuary, so uh, not uh, very, 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 very weak in the farm area. So the uh, circulation can be uh, quantified by a variable called the omega. That's the uh, the vorticity, the along channel vorticity. So if you have a strong uh, circulation, then the vorticity is large. 
So when we plot the vorticity, we find that, okay, so in the farm area, the vorticity is almost zero. This means the circulation was not developed, especially in the uh, 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 seaward boundary. And after farm still, the, we have very low uh, uh, vorticity development in after the farm. That means we, uh, the, the, the farm reduced the long channel flow and uh, then flow reduction might suppress the lateral circulation. So we, yeah, that means might mean because we, we have to do lots of tests to see this is from the farm. And uh, during app, now the flow is uh, flowing from north to south, right? from the well, first takes the uh, northern boundary and then goes to the uh, uh, southern boundary. So in the means now the so the uh, during app, so the flow is more constricted in the channel because it's very uh, it's constrained, very narrow. But after the farm, it seems that the flow spread right to the wider channel after the farm. And it seems that the flow was reduced a little bit inside the inside uh, just the, in the farm area. We also that's the um, uh, uh, long channel flow. Then we check the cross channel flow. Means see this time we see. Okay, in the uh, upstream, in the uh, upstream of the farm, before the farm, in front of the farm, the circulation, we have three layer circulation, which is very odd, but we have all, uh, 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 but after the farm, we have uh, clockwise circulation fully developed across the, uh, the, the, the whole cross section, right? So it's totally different than the, uh, compared with the flood. Fizzle tide. So, and then we also calculate the uh, uh, what is the statement that so the what is the was not developed before the farm, but after farm is uh, almost the same everywhere. That means we, we didn't the farm impact is negligible. We didn't see any distinct impact uh, changes before and after the farm, and also across the channel, so less changes. So this means the farm area has has no difference between farm area and no farm area. So what caused the problem? Cause this, uh, cause this uh, pattern, the uh, asymmetry, asymmetry in the uh, tidal flow and the, the circulation. So you want to understand the pattern, we did the momentum analysis. So the, this is just the, the NS equation for the, uh, in the physical geography. The, we need to transfer, because this curved channel, we need to transfer the coordinate from the uh, Cartesian or geographic condition uh, coordinate to the uh, curvilinear coordinate. So from the X, Y or North East uh, uh, coordinate to the SN that follows the, the curve of the asteroid called the SN uh, coordinate. But after the trans transformation, we have mm, several variables appeared. So the, on the left-hand side is still the local acceleration, this the streamwise and the lateral direction. And on the right hand side, so actually uh, we have uh, two terms appeared. So the, this, the first term on the left, on the right hand side is the centrifugal force. That means if the curve, if the centrifugal force will drive the flow. And uh, also there is a convergence or divergence forcing. Means if your channel gets narrower or gets wider, that will also cause the uh, flow. Actually, these two terms are the, from the advection, but when we uh, it, uh, uh, extract them from the advection, we can see how would the bathymetry or the farm change the advection. And then the rest terms are the corrosive force, the biotropic pressure gradient, biokinetic pressure gradient, the local uh, surface and the bottom friction. And uh, so, in our analysis, we, we did this analysis based on our uh, field data. So the, the major terms as like the, the common terms are the streamwise advection and the centrifugal forcing and the convergence forcing. So all these three advection terms are more important. So, so next, what is the centrifugal forcing? It, it will, uh, course, will induce, induce a circulation, like shown in this figure, if, if the channel had a bend, the when the flow is uh, tight, this so going into the is the curve of the channel, 
the surface flow will always go from the inner bend to the outer bend. Then we'll return at the bottom, right? We'll cause the circulation. It's called a centrifugal uh, forcing. And the uh, convergence or divergence is also easy to understand. So when the flow hits a, hits a structure, uh, it will go around, right? Around the, around the structure. So we will divergence in front of the uh, structure and then we will convergence, the flow will convergence just next to the structure. Uh, after the structure, so the flow will go back, right? To, 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 to the, uh, to the, uh, in front to after the after the structure and uh, we'll convert it again and the divergent in the other part. So we will focus on these two uh, uh, momentum terms in our data analysis. So first let's check the uh, momentum at peak flood. And uh, so the left top panel shows the streamwise uh, 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 momentums. So it's from the uh, uh, it's, it's the C word transect, so at thousand. So we can see in the momentum anal analysis, the black line, the SA means the streamwise advection. That means from the south to north, we have a very negative streamwise stream advection. That means the flow was reduced when it goes through the farm. And uh, so the, the red dot line right, shows the uh, convergence and divergence forcing. See, so the flow is reduced in the farm and the increase, right, at the edge of the farm. It's similar back to here at the bottom, right? It's diverged in front of the farm and it converged at the edge of the farm. See, uh, therefore, the we we can see this impact, this advection impact, uh, shown by the momentum analysis. But and also uh, for the cross-channel uh, direction. We see the dominant terms is the centrifugal forcing. See this black dashed line? That means the circulation is driven by the, the bend or the curvature in the, in the channel, by right? dominant terms. After the farm, so when we do an analysis after the farm, you see all the variables are very small, except the convergence, right? In the, in the right side, right, right, right part of, of, the, of the channel because the, the, the channel gets converged, right? In the, uh, I get, oh, sorry, gets diverged in this mountain, right? So there's, a, there's a shallow mountain and it's diverged in the shallow mountain and in, in, increased uh, in the other, in the secondary channel. It's captured by the, this symmetry effect was captured by the momentum analysis. And the, uh, again, in the uh, cross channel direction, that is still the circuit, the, uh, the, uh, curvature will try to drive in the uh, circulation, also showing the momentum. So that means the the momentum analysis tells us that so in the, the flow will decrease going through the farm and it will die around by right, at the edge. And uh, the cross channel flow is driven by the uh, curvature. And uh, then at the peak gap, now the flow is going from south to north to north to south. So we now the landward, right, landward boundary is the upstream, right, it's before the farm. So in the momentum analysis, we find that there is a very large, the red dash line shows the convergence divergence forcing. So we see now the flow is going south, so it's negative. And the positive uh, term means it will decrease the flow, right? That means, the, the flow will convert, will constrict it in the uh, channel. And after the channel, it will spread, right? Diverge, spread to the wide area, right? So it will maybe not, mainly not go through the farm, just follow the edge of the farm and spread in the other part. And uh, so the, uh, again, the centrifugal forcing dominates the uh, lateral flow. And uh, because there's an anti bend at the further north. so maybe that's very, very complicated in this area, but because the farm is very narrow and it's not from the, maybe the farm had a little effect. And after the farm, now in the sewer uh, transect, we see, well, the uh, uh, 
flow reduction, and we see some re, uh, flow reduction in the farm area shown by this uh, streamwise reduction the black line. And with uh, red dot line means the flow will go well, around the farm back to their uh, original uh, direction. So this shown by this momentum analysis. And in the uh, cross uh, uh, channel, in cross direction, so the uh, uh, centrifugal forcing is almost uniform across the farm. That means just, just reduce a little bit at the west, means the farm just won't suppress the circulation that much. And uh, so, so our hypothesis is that if there's a farm, it reduces the, uh, the streamlined flow and also and then suppress the circulation. So how do we prove that? That means we need to link the, the reduction, flow reduction and the uh, water history. So the flow reduction is represented by the uh, advection, the streamwise advection. Yeah, if that one, it will tell us where the flow will decrease or increase. The, the, the uh, water history will tell us the strength of the circulation. Then we made a two uh, quality analysis. So the top one, the top figure shows the, uh, the uh, flood phase at the landward transect. That means so at the landward transect is after the farm, right? During flood, then it's after the farm. Now, the uh, negative advection means the flow decreased right, from towards the, the, the after the farm. And then we have very low uh, water history developed. That means the flow reduction is correlated with the uh, suppression of, of circulation. And then next plot shows the app phase. It means where the uh, flow, where the, the flow going out of, from, from the north to the south. Mm. And again, we look at the after the farm. So now the positive uh, direction means the flow is reduced. And then again, so follow this trend, when the uh, positive uh, advection created with the low circulation, right? What is the, that means the flow reduction is, is will, will, will cause the decrease in the uh, circulation right, based on this correlation analysis. And uh, okay, that's the part of the flow patterns. Then we move, we move, we try, we try to study the farm pattern on turbines and mixing. That's also uh, some heavy work. First, we check the profiles at the uh, in front of farm and after farm, shown by the, the solid uh, uh, lines are just in front of farm. We see the velocity is larger near surface and lower near the bottom. However, after farm, we see the velocity reduced near the surface and it's larger near the bottom. That shows by the dash line. This is in the farm area. And also in the main channel, right? Just a little bit away from the farm in the main channel shown by the squares. So the 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 flow was larger uh, was larger in the surface, right? Just in front of the farm, before the farm, but after the farm, the, even in the main channel, away from the farm, the surface flow was reduced, right? That means it will change the the, the gradient of the velocity, the velocity profile just re flipped, right? Usually it's increased towards surface, but now it decreased towards surface. Then, so this means this structure. Will cause the tur the uh, turbulence the mixing. The turbulence is from the velocity shear. If there is a uh, gradient, we will cause uh, mixing. So the uh, uh, whether the however, if there is a stratification, means there is a change in the uh, salinity that will suppress the mixing. So in physical oceanography, there is there oceanography there is a very f famous uh, number called uh, Richardson number R I G can be used to identify to tell whether the turbulence is stronger or the, the stratification is stronger. So it is the squared vertical shear, the ratio of together squared square vertical shear over the squared buoyancy frequency, the S square over the N square, and cause of the gradient ratio number. If this number is less than 0.25, means we have less stratification, then it will cause mixing. And then in the in our analysis, so we find that, well, 
in the front and in the main channel, uh, we all we, we all see very low uh, resistance number near the surface, right? Especially see these uh, uh, open markers, right? The open markers are just show behind the farm. See the open circle after farm, open square is up to the farm. That means there is a mixing occurred after the farm. The student flood. And then during app. So we see during app, well, before the flow reached the farm, it's already reduced the inner surface, right? And uh, after the farm is, well, it's what could be more uniform. And in the main channel, so it's no, not, we didn't see too much deviation. So the, the, uh, the, the velocity is also increased larger near the surface. So it's totally different than uh, uh, flat face. And uh, also the richest number, the gradient richest number shows, shows it seems that in from the farm, we have a little bit mixing, but after farm, right, it's, more, more, it's very large near the surface, means it's got stratified. So that's mixing. It means well, it's totally different yeah, than the, uh, the flat face of type. The vertical gradient remains similar, right, before and after the farm. And the stand mixing occur in front of the farm. All right, then what, what, what causes this mixing? So how do we tell which, uh, which uh, mechanism causes this mixing? We did a time scale analysis. So uh, we, using this time scale analysis, we can identify this uh, level streaming that causes the mixing. What is level streaming? So this left plot shows the, the circles with cross means the along channel direction. The, the red, uh, curve means the circulation. See, if if we have a clockwise circulation and we have some low velocity, right, just close to the shore or after the farm, this circulation will transport this low velocity to the away, right, to the to the other part. We will above this higher velocity. See here, right. After the circulation, we will drive the low flow to the right. Now the flow in the surface is lower. There will be a shear occur right, in this uh, interface and it will cause mixing. Well, this, uh, well, this term or the Felix can be described by a time scale tau. Right, this shown by this uh, formula. Negative tau means it will uh, cause mixing. Positive tau means cause, cause uh, stratification. And uh, since the tau is time, if the tau is less than half tidal cycle, means less than six hours, means it's that's it's strong, right? It will mix within within half tidal cycle. If it's larger than six hours, means that's very weak, right? It won't change the uh, the mixing pattern. Okay, then we calculate the tau over the one tidal cycle as the lower transect. See, we can see during flood, right? So the square is the in the channel of circles are in the after the farm, all very negative values means it will uh, destabilize, destabilize the, the full column. It will cause the mixing shown by the up diagram. So it will transfer the lower velocity to the higher velocity cause mixing, especially all during flood. And during app, we'll see just two points, right? It's, it's weak. It's not as large as the flood. So that means what? That means during flood, the farm induced uh, uh, low velocity zone will extend away to the farm, to the main channel area, right? transported by the circulation, and then that will cause mixing right? away from the farm. And also, we, this is spring tide observation. Well, one, we also see the similar pattern repeated in the nip tide, means that's consistent. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, today we can only been complete the first talk, the only first topic. And uh, we see this farm impact. If we want to uh, include the farm in the model, so I see, I would like to consider farm force in my numerical model. So how can I do it? So the way is, uh, the easiest way is to quantify the farm force using a drag coefficient, right? We call the CD, drag coefficient. Then the CD times U square is your drag force, 
right? So the force uh, uh, of form induced by form acting on the fluid. And uh, so here we have after some uh, some uh, assumption, we derived the drag force, the CD, is a function of the uh, friction velocity as the U star, and also the height, the penetration of the form, and the depth of the total water column depth, right? HF is a form penetration, total uh, capital H is the total water depth. And the U, U star F is a friction velocity just be below the form. U, U star B is the friction in the bottom. It means the bulk drag coefficient is related to the bottom friction. Right? It's not only itself, also to the bottom friction. And uh, so that means if you want to know CD, then you can do the U star F or U star B, right? the friction velocity. Then there are two ways to estimate the uh, friction velocity U star. One is use Reynolds stress. Right? We assume the Reynolds stress linearly decrease from bottom to the to, 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 the, to the surface or to the uh, uh, lower edge of the form. And the other method called using mixing length, right? The, uh, in this way, we need to know the dissipation, maximum dissipation and the U star over the KL. K is a one common uh, constant 0.4. L is a distance, the mixing length is a distance to your uh, boundary. So that's the two ways, right? We have two ways to estimate U star and then Different U star can give us different CD. Then we did our uh, uh, analysis mainly focusing on the flood. So the, this plot, the blue lines are shows the tidal flow. So from seven to ten hours, right? It's the peak flood. So the flow has uh, increased to uh, maybe 0 0 0.3 meter per second, and then starts to the app. So it's will turn to negative, and uh, the solid. Uh, the red line with the solid diamond shows the U star calculated from the Reynolds stress equation three. And the open diamond line with open diamond shows the U, U star calculated from the mixing lens. I say that especially in the uh, near the peak flood where the velocity is larger is quite similar. That means there's two ways, right? It, it, it works or uh, good uh, in the peak flood. But in the early flood and uh, it's very early flood, it's some deviation. And uh, then you now we have U star, we we can substitute to the equation two, right? Capture the book drag coefficient C D. So it again tells us in the in the around the peak flood, right? 8.5 to 10, the peak flood, the two, the C D from the two uh, U star are similar, right? The value of the drag coefficient is around. Uh, 0.004, uh, 8, 0.008. That's the drag coefficient right, of the, the, the entire form. So we have this, we quantify the drag force. Well, and it's the same that we, ha we have already completed all the work, right? It's, it's very heavy. But one, we missed one stuff. We, we missed a control test, control experiment, right? One would say, well, if make your uh, congruence drawing, you will have to remove the farm and do another survey. Well, that's impossible, right? We cannot let the farms remove the farm, do another survey. So as, as an alternative, we can run using models, right? We can we build, we use Ram's model, build the, uh, for the, build the model for the estuary, for the damage water river, and uh, we include and not include the farm to see any difference. And, uh, so in order to do this, we have to first modify the source code because in their model, the, the drag forcing can only act at the bottom, like the vegetation coral reef, can only act at the bottom. We have first modified the source code, move the drag force to the surface because our farm is floating in the surface. And then we in, in, uh, in, implement in our derived drag force to the model and uh, run with and without farm, see the difference, right? Showing by the figure. So the counter plot shows the symmetry, the vector shows the, the velocity. See, we can see clearly the, the, if there is a farm, well, during flood, the velocity was reduced, right? In this whole area, in the farm area and extended to the, to the, to the main channel, right? And, uh, but uh, and also we also had an analysis, uh, it's called, uh, uh, because people will see, 
the bend, uh, the curvature, will also decrease along channel velocity. Right? Then we have a, a non-dimensionalized uh, Rossby number. We calculate the ratio of the uh, drag force to the ratio of the corrective force in the streamlined direction. So the number is nine to 50 over, over one tidal cycle. That means the drag force is larger than the uh, corrective force for the long channel direction. That means the long channel direction, the flow reduction is mainly from the form, not from the curvature. And another, uh, Hypothesis is the if there's a farm, the low flow uh, region will is transported or extended to the to the main channel, right? See here, this plot, we see the uh, without farm, so it's just very uniform distributed along the in the cross section. But when we put the farm, we see the surface flow is reduced and extended to the right, and the circulation was suppressed, right? Just after the farm. And uh, the volcanicity has very it also shows a slower uh, value, yeah, uh, smaller value, just uh, after the farm. It's all consistent to our observation. Right? That means we had a control group from the model. Now we are very confident that the farm track dominates the flow reduction, not the curvature, and the lateral straining right shows the lower velocity over faster velocity that uh, uh, caused by the farm, not caused. The not from the bathymetry. Yeah, now um, we are confident about the, the patterns we observe are from the farm, not from the bathymetry. And uh, so, so now we have only 10 minutes left. Let's do a quick summary. And uh, it seems that during flood, so the flow will hit the edge of the farm, hit the edge, and it goes through it, right? Cause mix and cause uh, uh, decrease the velocity in the surface. And cause mixing right in the farm in the farm edge and in the main channel, and suppress the circulation right after the farm, and uh, uh, and also uh, yes during yeah there we have this mixing here and then however during app right the flow is it's more like thread from the convergence from the main channel and it follows the, uh, the edge of the farm and also follow the bathymetry I mean of the main channel. So the farm had little effect on the uh, dynamics yeah, from the observation. So that is the today's main message. Uh, since we have only 10 minutes left, I think I can stop here. I have also another topic about the subtitle flow. Maybe we have to save it for later. That's all negative work, all the math. So using, I have very quick uh, uh, introduce. It seems that in the observation, the subtitle flow will also limit by the residual, means we over, we, it, we average the tidal flow over one tidal, the current over one tidal cycle. So it gives us, or if it's average over one tidal cycle, which part of the flow will go into the farm, go into the estuary or I mean, out of the estuary. Based on the observation and the uh, seaward transect over one tidal cycle, the flow was going into the estuary from by the red, on the right, on the left, and the queen outer estuary on the right, right, this pattern. But the theoretical, right, analytical pattern is the opposite. It should go into the estuary or the right part of the channel, right? So the, the right portion of the channel, so shown by the red, and it come out of the estuary over the left channel, left shows, right, or left shows, so the blue and the blue. Right, this is the typical theory. And but it's opposite to our observation. Then we build up a model, a negative model. So when we include the drag, the farm forcing in the model, we recover the similar pattern. See, it's similar to the observation. So the right hand is the, our analytical model readout. That means, yeah, so the, the, it's the farm reverse this pattern just at this lo location, yeah. And uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, maybe, so we can see, let's go to the, so why, so what, what caused this kind of reversal? So in the farm's uh, seaward boundary, uh, during flood, 
but the flow is going up north, right? But, it's re but the flow is reduced inside the farm, and uh, and uh, well, there means the, the du dx is negative, right? We have a decrease of the velocity, and but the, the u is u is positive, then the direction u du dx is negative during flood as the seaward boundary, or during app that flow is going out. The tidal flow u now is negative because going to the uh, going out, out of the estuary, and the but the uh, gradient along channel gradient is is also negative. So, but the total to, the the advection term is positive, means we have positive advection in flood and oil. Then, if we average over tidal cycle, then it give us uh, all positive value. Uh, all, oh, sorry, all the uh, negative, uh, okay, sorry, sorry, yeah, in the in the edge, it's not all negative value. So, but remember, it is the uh, opposite of this advection that drives the, the subtitle flow pattern. So we see, maybe the tidal the, 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 the average, the vaction forcing term, is try to uh, increase a uh, 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 subtitle flow, right, into the farm, in the farm area and out farm in the other part. And that's, that's, that's consistent. And that drives the, the, the subtitle flow, right? This is the forcing term, and then it drives the flow. And uh, this is uh, at the sewer boundary. So if we move to the landward boundary, right? So we'll be having this total opposite. Uh, this opposite. So now the flow is increased right, at the edge and uh, after the farm and the decrease the really internal farm. Means now we have the uh, the inflow over the right and outflow in the left, where we have the farm. This is also consistent to our observation. So in the in the observation along the landward transect, we have outflow on the left and the inflow on the right. So I mean, I think yeah, that's uh, it's uh, today's uh, work. So, so it's, it, the take-home message is very uh, simple. Then is the limited farm size can impact the dynamics in the whole cross-section, especially during flood, if they will transport to the main channel and cause mixing over there. And uh, we, all this work tells us that when we, when we want to study the food delivery or the material transport, we should include the force of the farm right, to the fluid because it will change the fluid and then change the transport. It's very, for the subtitle patterns, that means it would, the subtitle fluid always entering the farm it means a lot of stuff will get stuck by the farm. Yeah, that's our main message. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, really interesting talk, um, John. Uh, this is pretty neat stuff. I, you know, I think I don't think a lot of people think about the potential physical impacts of um, farms. You know, especially a farm that I mean, this isn't a massive farm. Uh, it's a reasonably big farm, but it definitely isn't over the entire, you know, the entire cross section of the estuary. It's just over a portion. And the fact that it's modifying the flow across the whole system is, is pretty, pretty neat. Uh, do you have a sense of how big the farm, if you change the farm size, w would there be a point where there would be no impact? Like if you reduce the farm by half or a quarter, um, would that make a difference or did you not, I'm guessing you, you did a lot here that maybe may not be one of the things you've done. Yeah, we, uh, we had an analysis of the farm size. Uh, so it, it means if we reduce the size, it will of course decrease the effect or if we reduce the drag force, right? Uh, and it's not reported here, but we do have this, the, the, uh, the case study, if we uh, reduce the size, see here, so this this block uh, box shows the farm area. If we make it to the to the to the left, right, decrease the size, then all all the pattern will back to the theoretical pattern. Ah, yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So oh, sorry. Let's go back. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Back here. Yes. See. So this is our observation. So without farm, it's just. Divided by the channel, right? Or the right show, left show is different, in or out. But when we put the farm, because the farm, the drag, the the forcing is, uh, is the direction forcing is so large, so it overcome other our other mechanisms. Yeah, 
if we make it smaller, then we will back to the analytical, uh, uh, the, the, the typical patterns, yeah. Or we make it uh, less denser, right? Make the loose, right? We increase the gap of each long line. That means we would uh, decrease the drag, drag force right, in the farm area, yeah. Uh, cool, cool, thank you. Uh, are there other questions from the audience? Yes, I have a question. Can you hear me all right? Uh, yes, I can hear, yeah. And this, this is Bill over at the Auburn Shellfish Lab. Uh, you know, great stuff. Um, certainly interesting to see sort of the environmental potential impacts and then thinking about how this might be used by the farmer. And, and I can imagine there are lots of questions, as you mentioned, that you could ask at the micro scale of what's happening in the farm. This is sort of viewing the farm as a, a box um, and what happens around that box. Um, the, I just, I'm curious, I've seen farms oriented certain ways. We struggle with this about whether we want our lines of gear uh, perpendicular to wave action or parallel to wave action. And, and farmers have different thoughts about that. I was just wondering, um, I, I, looking back at the beginning of your talk, how this farm, how their gear is oriented. Is it parallel to the banks or perpendicular to the banks? Uh, it's a parallel to the banks. You see, can you see this uh, plot? So this is the bathymetry. So the farms are just the parallel to the, the channel. Oh, okay. That, all right. And so that's how their gear was strung that way. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. That's, yeah, in this direction. Yeah. That's because uh, the, the, uh, the tidal current is very large. If we do the perpendicular to the flow, the mooring load will be very large. Okay. And also, the, uh, and all your, see, if this is the, the long line, it will be bent too much, right? Because we can only we only apply mooring to the two end. If if right. it's yeah perpendicular to the flow, it will just bend, right? All the cages will mess connect messed up in the yeah right. in the middle. And yeah, even yeah. in there our field, we saw even they they make it parallel to the bend, but especially on this seaward boundary, we saw the uh, the uh, cages are grouped. So they also, the, the shape also bended. So the, some part of the groups together and, and the evaluation, the, 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 the long lines just uh, separated, uh, uh, yeah, long between each other. Yeah. It will also change okay. the, the, the location. Yeah. Great, thank you. Thank you. So uh, quick questions along. So is it safe to say that that the main effect that the that the surface farm has is to is to um, add friction to the surface, which ends up reducing tidal straining? Uh, on the uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You can see. Yeah. It it, it decreases the time. Yeah. The velocity. Okay. Yes. So that's the yes. It it, it has a forcing. Yeah. Acting on the on the surface. So, uh, okay. Hey, another, yeah, question. And so we, based on this analytical model, we can do like, uh, we can put particles, we can put the concentration and uh, see the distribution along the farm. So I have all, uh, lots of stuff related to that. So today we, we cannot show it. Yeah, so. All right, thanks, Shalom. Uh, it's a little bit after one, so I think it would be safe yeah. to let everyone go. Yeah. Uh, uh, we appreciate your talk today. And, and uh, yeah, look for more stuff from Shalom about Mobile Bay in the uh, coming months. Yes. Okay, thank you. Right. Thanks, guys.